When you're learning Linux, it's usually a good idea to try and do so from the command line. Yes, there have been some nice GUIs that have been built on top of the command line over the years that make interacting with your system a little bit easier, or at least a little bit more intuitive, especially if you're coming from an OS like Windows, where maybe you didn't really work with the command line that much, and you're just used to clicking on things in explorer.exe. Uh, but the problem with this is that on different Linux distros, there's gonna be different GUIs, uh, if they're using different desktop environments. And even then, Within the same desktop environment, if you go from version to version, there's still differences. There's differences in how things are laid out and the abilities that those GUIs have. So it can be a little bit confusing if you're switching from, for example, XFCE to KDE to figure out how to navigate everything. But on the Linux shell, pretty much every Linux distro is going to have the same shell, or at least their shells are pretty much going to work the same way as far as the commands that they have. Uh, and that's regardless of what desktop environment they have, and even what kernel they have. On older kernel versions, you still pretty much have access to the same commands. So to help you along with learning the command line, I'm going to show you some of my favorite bash one-liners, which are basically just very short commands that are also extremely useful. So first we're gonna look at double exclamation mark. Uh, let me just do a neo fetch again to demonstrate this. So double exclamation mark basically just refers to rerunning whatever the last command was. So in this case, it was neo fetch. And you see double exclamation mark is going to run NeoFetch again. So this is really useful in situations where uh, maybe you need to have root access to run a command and you forgot it. Like you can see here, super user access is required. You've probably seen this prompt already if you've been using the Linux command line for like literally a day because there's a lot of commands you need to be root to run for security purposes. So. If you want to rerun this without having to type out sudo emerge sync, you can just sudo double exclamation point. And, well, I actually don't even have to enter my password. You can just see here what it's trying to run. So sudo emerge sync, double exclamation point to the rescue. Uh, this command right here probably saves, well, specifically this, the sudo exclama double exclamation point, probably saves Linux users more time than every other command that's out there. Um, but not everybody actually knows how powerful this command can be. So you can actually use this to refer to any command that is in your bash history. Um, so if you've never had a look at your bash history, we'll just take a look at mine real quick. Um, so this is just a file that pretty much keeps track of all of the different commands that you've run. Um, you can also alter the size of it in your bash RC. You can even make it infinite if you want, so it'll remember like every single command you've run going back to when you first installed your system. Uh, so yeah, it's a really useful thing. Um, now here at the top, this is actually the oldest commands that I've run. And then if we go to the bottom, uh, you'll see like this sudo emerge sync. This is the, uh, you know, some commands that I just ran more recently. So like, for example, if I wanted to run this command as root, this is number one in my bash history. So I can do boom, uh, well not run it as root, but just to rerun it again, I can do exclamation point one, and you'll see it's doing YTA my video, which will fail because that's not actually a valid URL. This is actually an alias that I created to just use YouTube DL to get the uh, best quality audio of a video. Um, so yeah, you could do that with your bash history. Now, you might be thinking, this doesn't really seem that useful if I were to just uh, like use this to run the second to last command, right? Remembering 1541, like who's actually going to remember that? That's crazy. Well, the good thing is you can number these forwards and backwards. So for example, this um, vim bash history, this is the second to last command that was run. So if I just do exclamation point minus two, this should run that. Uh, well, actually, it's going to do YTA my video since uh, that was really the second to last command that I ran uh, up here. It just doesn't show up in my bash history. So you get the idea. You can just go backwards. Like if you wanted to run the third to last, uh, that would be exclamation point negative three, which of course is YTA my video again. 
Uh, so yeah, you can just go backwards that way. Now, maybe you're thinking that this is still kind of crazy, right? Do you honestly expect us to keep track of the last five or six commands in our head? I mean, it's not like we're using Elon Musk Neuralink here. Well, you can also use exclamation point with the first letter of a command that you want to run. So for example, if I wanted to do, um, this should run the vim, so I can do exclamation point V, so this is going to begin the first letter of this command here, and boom, we're back in the bash history. Uh, so yeah, that is really handful way to deal with the history there. And you can use this with multiple letters if you've got uh, multiple commands in your history that begin with the same letter. Like if I do a uh, neofetch and then uh, I think I could do an nmap as well. Yeah, so I can just write exclamation point ne and then that's going to run the neofetch for me. Now, one of the things that can be very problematic on the command line is misspelled syntax, uh, especially if you type out a really long command like this one here, uh, and you're the type of person like me who tends to make a lot of spelling mistakes. You obviously don't want to just mash down the left arrow and then go all the way back to where that spelling mistake was and then fix it. Now, one big brain move is to just enable Vim keys in your terminal so that you can actually go back uh, with words like using the capital B command, uh, just like you would in Vim, for example. That's one kind of big brain way to deal with it, but an even bigger brain way to deal with it is to just fix the spelling mistake right there in your shell. And we can do this with carrots. So you saw here that the spelling mistake is updo. This is supposed to be update. So all we need to do is caret updo and then caret update, and this is going to rerun the command uh, by replacing updo with update. In fact, we can actually do this uh, in an even bigger brain way, so we can just get rid of that because, you know, up is correct, we just, or upd is correct, rather. We just need to change oot to ate. And there you go. So you see it's doing the emerge update instead of updo, and of course, super user access is required, so we can't actually uh, run that command, but you get the idea. You could even use this to rerun a different command on the same directory or file that you created. Uh, so for example, let's, um, let's clear the screen first. So let's uh, just create a file real quick. So like, let's touch cat. And now let's say that I want to run the file command on cat to uh, just get file information about it. I mean, it's an empty file anyway, but uh, you get the idea if this was, maybe you copied something and then you wanna get file information on it. Uh, all we gotta do is do that exclamation point and replace touch with file. And there you go, it did a file command on cat, and of course it just tells us cat is empty because it's just an empty file. Now let's take a look at something different than just uh, running commands and modifying old commands that we've run. How about traversing directories? So this is something else that you can do at the command line instead of using a GUI, uh, as you might already know. So. Uh, you might already know that dot and dot dot refer to the current directory that you are in and the parent directory uh, respectively. So this would be really useful, say for example, if you're copying a file from somewhere totally different into your system and maybe you're a few folders deep, like obviously I'm just home Kenny test right now, uh, but you can imagine if this was a uh, directory that strung all the way over here. You don't want to have to type that whole thing out. So if I wanted to, for example, copy something from my downloads just into this directory, I can cp downloads file dot, and then you'll see that it is uh, right here in my test folder. And look, we got a nice little Stallman meme there. Gotta leave a like for a Stallman meme. And uh, so if we wanna move this back up to the parent directory, we can move dead with two dots. So now it's no longer in here, but it is right there inside of our home folder. Now there's one directory shortcut that I don't really see a lot of people use, and that is going back to the last directory or the alias for the last directory. Um, so let's say for example, I was in my Linux kernel folder 
and then I need to CD back to my home folder for whatever reason, but then I need to go back to the kernel folder. Uh, you don't actually have to type out that whole folder directory that you were just in. You can just CD hyphen and boom. That stands for the last directory that I was in. And of course, as you can see, I'm back there in my Linux directory. So there you go, guys. That was just a quick video to show you some quick tricks on the command line. I'm probably going to add this to the bash playlist that I actually started about a year ago. It's hard to believe that I've been making videos for that long. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in learning more about bash or command line tricks in general, definitely check out that playlist and you all have a Merry Christmas.